I thought I'd done with this. Maybe I was going to show you another video of this in a PCB. But the temperature's working and it's fine. Ah, uh, but you never guess what happened this morning. Oh, pie hut. Wave share. I don't know. Right, we've got a new a new RP2040 device. Hey, oh, this time I get it in a little box. The other one, this one, didn't come in a box. It just came in a, a baggie. Okay, so this is a Pico RP2040 device, but it's got a built-in screen. So if we compare them, so this is the 2040 Plus, and this is yet another new 2040 device this one it's got its two buttons on it's got a screen on the device it says this is an rp2040 lcd 096 now unfortunately this isn't oled and it's not i squared c it's spi all right so same size as you'd expect it's the same footprint usb c as well I don't know if it looks like it's upside down. You see that bit there in the middle of the 2040 plus is the extra memory, I think. So this doesn't have extra memory. These buttons here and now on this bit to make way for the screen. So they've redesigned the board quite a lot, really, uh, to make space for that. They've sort of turned it upside down and put the screen on the space that was underneath. Of course, for this, I don't need the OLED, but hopefully the OLED should work on it if I just drop the code directly onto this. I'm going to flash the UF2 file onto it. I'm just going to use, I'm still using just the Pico display, the original Pimeroni one. Yeah, so still 117 as the previous one was. Let's save the temperature module onto it. I'll grab a copy of the OLED. Now oh, let's try running it, I suppose. What happens if I just run it? Oh, there's nothing called BME 280. Yeah, I saved it. Oh, is it just BME? Oh, it's BME 280. Oh, BME 280. Let's try running that. All right, so pin to pin, that's compatible. There's the temperature, 12 degrees today if we are to believe it. Thankfully, this uses certain pins on the output for the SPI. Now I found this diagram and the SPI stuff is on GP8 to 12 and then there's also a GP25. So thankfully I don't use any of those because this is just the power for this and this is the I squared C. Found this code to run this screen for another wave share product. So it was a Pico with a with an external wave share. And when I checked it, the pins are the same. So we see here like CS cable select, I imagine that's on GP9 and it's on GP9 there as well. So this should be compatible. So I'm going to this is a, a module. That's where I found it. This is a module, but it's also got a little game in it. But we can't use that because we haven't got the up and down buttons. But it does say at the start of it. Hello, Pico, Pico LCD. And let's see if this will just run. I'm really hoping it will. The only thing I was concerned about is where I found this. It had its own UF2 file. So that doesn't seem to be doing anything, does it? Well, if name equals main, or maybe that's why it's not working. So let's do file, save as. I'll save that on the Pico anyway. So Pico LCD 096.py. And then I'm going to do a save as main.py. I don't know whether this will work. So let's run that, see if that works. So it's doing something, but it's not waking the screen up, is it? Which is a pity. It's not crashed. OK, this the, the OLED screen's on from before, so there's not an issue there. All right, so let's try something different. I'm going to go off and get the UF2 file that was along with this, and I'm going to drop that one on the device and see whether that will make it work. So let's try running that. Oh, it's different. I've definitely got something happen now. 
Okay, all right, so it needs its own UF2. So I don't know whether well, that popped up for a second and then went away again. Um, let's just stop that and run it again. So yeah, hello, this is Pico. And then it goes into this. And then I think this is where you can change the color of the screen as you can move it. But you can see that as a multicolor screen. Um, and looking at some of this code here, where we write to the screen, it's literally doing this, LCD, do that, and then the color. Then it draws a line and then it goes into the game. So based on that, I've modified that code to take my temperature monitoring and put it on this screen here as opposed to on the OLED. So if you look at the code, I've not really done much different. I define the LCD module for the screen. I fill it black. Uh, this little box changes the colour a little bit to give a red and a green border. Uh, I've just defined that so I can run it lots of times. You call the display, which writes to the screen. Now I write the word temperature on it, although that vanishes very, very quickly. Call my I squared C bus, which is still working, compatible, without uh, interfering with the spy, which is good. I do the same code I did on my other video there for calling the BME module. And then all I do is loop through this to update the temperature from the BME module. And this time I write that temp string to the middle of the screen. Draw the box again because I've cleared it. Wait a second to save polling that too many times. And the temperature will update about every second. So quite a nice little screen. I suppose um, the fact that you get a screen and you get a built-in RP2040 Pico-like device anyway, including the Lipo charger. I mean, it's more expensive than this screen on its own. But when you think of some of the videos I did earlier of the Pi Pico, then I added the Pico display on it, which of course did have control buttons. But the fact that you get the Pico and a screen, it might be worth the money. But it's more expensive than the RP2040 Plus, and it's also more expensive than an original Pico. For my application here, I've still had to get the temperature module as well. But there you go anyway. First looks at this new WaveShare RP2040 LCD 0.96. Okay, bye.